The Selfish Podcast acknowledges the traditional owners of the land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Everything that we discuss on The Selfish Podcast with Chloe and Steph is for informational purposes only. It's either our own experiences, opinions and insights or our guests. It's not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied upon as health or personal advice. It's time to prioritise yourself and your wellbeing. Subscribe now and get ready to put yourself first with The Selfish Podcast. Hi there, beautiful people, and welcome to the next episode of The Selfish Podcast with Chloe and Steph. We are so thrilled to have you here with us, joining us today. And we had quite a lot of um, comments come in from our last episode, mm-hmm. didn't we, Chloe? Yeah, we had so many. It was amazing. Um, in particular about um, our little amazing reel that Steph put together. <laughs> so great at all As of Freddie was sleeping socials. on me. <laughs> um, this is how we make this work. Steph's like message me. She's like, send me that snippet of like two minutes or something. I was like, the... I've, got, I've got a half an hour. Send He's napping on me. Um, this is how we make it work. Um, but we got some great feedback from that around time. Mm. And so we thought we'd share kind of what yeah. kind of came through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the beautiful Sam, and we've had Sam on the mm. podcast before and we'll link his episode. Yes. Um, Sam Meditates. Um so Sam popped into our inbox and he kind of chatted about time like we are in a trance-like state mm-hmm. a lot of the time. No, not a lot of the time. There's probably many people that aren't in a trance-like state. But when I was talking about time, I'm guessing that it resonated with him that potentially I am working in a trance-like state and so therefore time goes very fast. So if we kind of ground back into those practices like breath work, meditation, it yeah. brings our awareness back to yes. time but being in the present moment, yeah. which I think feels more grounded and slower. <laughs> so I thought that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, that was so good. So that's episode 30. We did that. We recorded that and released that back in December. Yes, go and have a listen. There were so many little like aha moments in that for me anyway around I need to get back into my practice. I have not been doing it. Yeah. Sorry, Sam. Because as I was putting that (laughs) rule together, so as I was listening to you say those words Mm. thousands of times as I was going back and forth. Oh, yeah. How did that go for you? You're like, Chloe, shut up. No, I loved it. Um, I think it's one of my favourite reels actually. Mm. Yeah, I really liked it. I love the fast forward bit. I was thinking also it's funny because sometimes, you know, time like time flies when you're having fun. Mm, yes. That whole thing. And yep. then sometimes, because I was saying it was feeling really heavy and slow for me, mm. but that's because like it was just after Arthur's, Arthur's passing. passing yeah. And mm. it, the, the last few weeks have, but that's, you know, sl- things slow down sometimes in those hard times. Yeah. Speed up in the fun times. Yeah. And then the in-between moments of just like, living and yeah. life driving and, just, and not realizing we've got yes there. i know yeah. when he gave that example i was like oh yeah that happens to be all the time me you're too. like driving and then it's like oh i i'm here how, <laughs> how did, did i, I arrive exactly. i don't remember that hour and a half of driving which is kind of a bit scary um another one was that my father-in-law came past yesterday and mm-hmm. he was like oh chloe i was listening to the pod and um i just wanted to give you some like insights around how I manage my time and I was like cool tell me and um he said you know like kind of the day before writing down your to-do list Mm -hmm. so that you're already aware like pre-aware of like the things that you want to try and accomplish the next day and um putting the tasks that are the most difficult at the top Mm -hmm. so I don't know if you've like read that book um eat the frog mm, yeah I have is that I yeah I remember exactly the, who the author is or whatever but essentially many it's moves like, ago yeah yeah you yeah. know like if you've got a really difficult conversation that you need to have like put that this or a phone call that you need to make put that at the top of the day yep. and accomplish it that way and I kind of liked this idea yeah because I think I was saying that I was I was getting things done but not feeling like Mm. accomplished in a sense and I felt like it was like that because the time was going so fast that um, it was just in this weird haze. But anyway, I feel like it's changing. Yeah? Yeah. Because that was a few weeks ago we recorded that episode. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, last week was a bit better. Yeah. Probably because I've got a bit more information to tell you. Yes. <laughs> Segue into, so we, on that ep, in that episode we also talked about Rafi yes. and his drop-offs being quite challenging. So we um, threw t- something different in the mix last week and we had Adam drop off every morning. Excellent. So as a bit of like a circuit breaker. Yep. And... He was amazing. <laughs> but we always thought that would be the case, did we? Uh, so did yeah, you, yeah. I wasn't really sure, you know, yeah. like. Well, that's good. Yeah. So then this morning, being Monday morning, um, I've dropped and he didn't cry. There was like a mini, oh. yeah, so it was really good. So hopefully that was a little circuit breaker. I spoke to like so many beautiful people after that episode as well, actually, like just yeah. checking in and, um, you know, go, so many people go through this. It's very yeah. normal and yep. it's a big change for their little bodies and minds as well as us as well. And some great feedback that I kind of got was like talking about brave points. Mm-hmm. So like this morning on the way to school, we're talking about, so at the end of the day, um, at the end of the drop-off, Raffi, like we want it to be a happy drop-off and we're going to get some brave points at the end of the day. So we've got like a little, um, you know, star like a chart. Yeah, star chart. Yeah. And then so we'll do it at the end of the week. We'll if he's got his um, brave po- five brave points, we'll go and choose a little toy from oh, the yeah. Amazing! Yeah. I want to see you do a star chart for me. Oh, what for? <laughs> just being like just cleaning up. And I don't know, just being a good girl. <laughs> Would you like me to do a star chart for you yeah, for all just... the amazing reels that you make and like how you show up here? I would, you'll, you'll be like blitzing it. I'll be buying you things all the time. You'll... At one at one point, Hugh and I did talk about having a star chart for ourselves, just okay. like getting getting through the day, you know, yeah. and doing things and just being brave. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe I do that like not so much as like sticking a sticker on a chart. I want to. I want a chart. Do I want you want to see it? Yeah. You're a visual. Visual person. Well, I just want to put the sticker on and be like, oh. Yeah, you should do it. it. Yeah, what, how do you do it though? Well, I think in my mind like maybe subconsciously I, you know, I will book myself a massage or go yeah. for a facial or go for my craniosacral as a kind of like a bit of a pat on the Reward, back. Reward, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That self-love time yeah. is like, although you shouldn't have to be a pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> because we've done things, but well, I'm words of affirmation, baby. So mm. I like, I like um, a little. <gasps> Do you know I've had a, a, I've had a something drop in about that. What? I feel like I'm actually more touched than I've ever really realised before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What brought this? Well, on? just like recognising in my re- relationships and how much I actually value a hug. A hug, yeah. Hugs yeah. are important. Yeah. So important. Are very important. So I think that maybe the the service one that I was, yeah, is but like the, but moving yeah. and changing. And the thing is, we can be all of them, right? Yes, so you can of actually course. be. You yeah, all you've have, got all components. Yeah, of each. and yeah. at different times, different ones mean more yeah. and are more valuable mm. than others. So yeah, that is totally normal. To totally change. normal. To and there's there's a lot of um, literature around the twenty second hug. So I don't know if you are familiar with the 20-second hug. Mm. And one of our beautiful listeners actually, um, we might, it was a while ago that we were talking about this kind of stuff and, and she sent us some information about hugging. But hugs increase oxytocin levels, they facilitate bonding, all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if you think about like straight jackets, they were actually – so you're almost hugging yourself because well, that, that pressure. It's like a nervous system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So the pressure on on those your two chest, parts of your body, your chest your and your back. And that 20 second hugs, like it takes 20 seconds to really get that oxytocin mm. flowing. So we can maybe do a 20 second hug after the episode. Aww. But yeah, think about that. I had a friend who always that. forced her to give me a 20 second hug. So do you count it out? How do you, you do it? Oh, you can. <laughs> Um, this is yeah. yeah ten seconds. Sure. We've got ten to go. Ten to go. Squeeze five, it in. Four, Are you a hugger? Three. Actually, like when you, I always think about this because there's some people when you greet them. Yeah. You know, like I'm a kiss on the cheek gal and I'm a quite a squeezy hugger. Okay. But I know that some people are not like that, and I try and because no, I've done my 
NLP training yes. and you're like when you're building rapport with someone you kind of try and match what yeah. they do yeah 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 and so sometimes I feel feel extremely awkward because I go in for the kiss and then they're like awkward and they don't kiss and then you like hug and then they give you like a really weak hug but I'm like a squeezer yeah and you're well, not matching depends. yeah and so are these all friends or is this also like business stuff or is it oh, mainly friend friends. stuff yeah, 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 yeah more like friends, it is yeah, it business. is a bit awkward mm. it is a bit awkward and speaking of studies I did read a study and it was mm. talking about when you incorrectly use an emotion it can damage the relationship because I don't know I find emojis sometimes hard to interpret especially cross cultures so do you feel like that way with a hug like if you have a bad hug or like some weird kiss situation where like you're trying to kiss them and they're trying to go away like does that do you think that is a detriment to the relationship Mm, I definitely think about it I don't know whether everyone would think about it though do you like after that happens for you I will Oh, let's talk. I'll speak for myself. I will like, reflect on it, but I'm a reflector. Like, yeah. I'm always been, I'm always like, oh, I didn't do that very well. Oh, I said that. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. And like constantly, like, yeah, I do that. Yeah. I do that thinking too. Thinking about the way that I've shown up in different circumstances. Yeah. I do that too, but then I just try and forget about it. Move on. I just focus on the good stuff and then leave the bad stuff away. Yeah. So. Back to the detriment thing. I don't think it is a, I don't think detrimental, a detrimental, but I try and I try and put it in my mind and be like, okay, that person is not a kisser. Yeah, I think it's sort of net neutral. But if it's a good kiss and a good hug, then that's definitely yeah, that's, you're getting that's, points. That's on happy. The, that's oxytocin. Yeah. yeah, and then you're getting points on the friendship chart. Like yeah, ding, ding, ding. yeah. true. Yeah, but then if you do the yeah, well, then I don't, I don't think it's detrimenting, but no. I don't think it's adding. No, it's not. So adding. I don't think it's subtracting, but I don't think it's adding. Mm. Yeah, because that's so. I've just been in Singapore last week mm-hmm. for work. And also caught up with some friends who um, are still living there, which was so great to see them. But it's interesting in the work context. Like, so there's people that I've been working with for three, four years I've never met in person. This was the first time I met them in person. Ooh, so we worked wow. for a hug. They tried to, they tried to not, well, no, some of them tried to hug, but otherwise I said, let's hug. And we had a <laughs> lovely hug. <laughs> let's hug so it out. I still hug in work situations. I yeah, hug so do I. Like on the lip. <laughs> <laughs> It's all coming out. No, I kiss no. on the lips. No, you no. get that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I kiss on the cheek. Yeah, on the cheek. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then some European colleagues, double kiss. Yeah, so I love that. Sort I love of, a double kiss. Sort of follow the cues, but yeah, you do mm. for awkward when it goes you a go bit to wrong, the wrong or you side. get Or you get the lips. Or you go you... for, oh, God, I've, no, that, I've not got the lips. <laughs> you haven't before? No lips. Okay. Or maybe a while I ago. I kissed but, actually no. last week. Oh, was it the end of <laughs> Morgan Won't Mind Me saying this? <laughs> I think it was when we were leaving Womad. We like just went the wrong way. Just but that's up. okay with but friends. But that was fine. Yeah, yeah, friends, fine, yeah. I'll yeah. give them all a kiss, yeah. but not yeah. for work colleagues. No, no, no. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but, yeah, it is fun. It, it is it funny. It is funny. Yeah. I and love then, all that, this human kind of behaviour and how, you know, some people are all for it and others are just totally not. Yeah. It fascinates me. Oh, it's fascinating. Mm. And then a lot of the a lot of the work I have has again that added layover or that added um layer of of culture. Mm. So some cultures want more space, others want less space. And it was interesting. I don't know if we've spoken about this on the pod before. So if we have, just tell me, we'll fast forward this section. Um, but it's talking about like in terms of cross cultural communication in um cultures like, you know, in Australia, in the US, in the UK, mm. when you're talking to someone, it's very common that your patterns will be talking over each other. So I'll talk and then you'll start talking over me to show that you are. You yeah, know, kind of in the conversation in and the listening. Conversation, exactly, yeah. listening. It feels like we're part of this together. Yes. Whereas in other cultures, like mm. Japan, for an example, mm. you know, a, a space might be of silence might be, you know, between five to eight seconds long, and that's considered normal. Whereas in a lot of Western cultures, a a silence of one to two seconds is like, oh, my goodness, what's happened? This is critically, something has gone critically wrong with this communication. So our comfortableness with silence, and I know we did do an episode Mm. talking about silence. Um, We did. Maybe we talked about it then. No, we didn't talk so. Yeah. yeah. No, we, we definitely covered it. But So there's the the linguistic thing but also proximity. Yes, Some cultures are more distance, comfortable being yeah. closer together and mm-hmm, others mm-hmm. wanting need, more space. You need your own personal space boundary. Yeah. Yeah, being held like we're doing right now. This is kind of like weird, isn't it? We're a bit far away. <laughs> it's all right. 
Oh, brilliant. So Singapore was great? Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was good. I flew Any... over economy, so that was like oh, a slap in the that's face. That's shit. It wasn't really, actually, it was fine. It was fine. I was in an emergency exit row. Oh, that's great. Which was good. Yeah. Um, but no, that was that was fine. Went with Singapore Airlines. They're lovely, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was a it was a hard work trip though. Like it was, all of the work trips are pretty full on in terms of mm. your seeing everyone from like breakfast through to dinner through to drinks afterwards. Yeah, because you've got all these people together who are never normally together. So you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. But I think just the proximity to Arthur's anniversary and his birthday. Like I don't think I realized how much of an impact that would mm. continue to have on me. And a lot of people, so I used to lead the Singapore marketing and comms team, so caught up Mm. with a lot of those people. I haven't seen them for four years, you know. I haven't been in the office for four years. So that brings some stuff up. And then a lot of other people, you know, when you meet people, um, one of those questions that people ask is, how many children do you have? Yes. And that comes up. And, again, like the amount of pain that that causes. Mm. And, I mean, it's not the fault of the person asking the question. They're just asking no, they're just they're trying to be interested in your exactly, life. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it really hurts. And it's like, okay, what what mm. walk do I take? And I think I need to just get better at like putting my suit of armour on. Mm. So before going into these situations, yeah. you know, visualising a suit of armour that I'm yeah. stepping into and visualising that I'm, you know, zipping it up because mm. I don't know how I should put a suit of armour on. You know, so that, that visual works for me. So I'm stepping into it. I'm, I'm zipping it up, I'm putting down the thing and I'm just being, you know, professional, mm. Steph, because it's so, I found it mm. so difficult. So It was a really difficult trip emotionally. But maybe, as you said, like maybe it was the, the proximity of time. Yeah. Do you yeah, know? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe or maybe just, you know, it's going back to Singapore where I used to live yeah. where we were carefree and footloose and fancy free and that True. innocence and, yeah, yeah, I don't know, or it's just, just this is the thing with grief. It's just like fucking rears its ugly head. Ugly. Well, no, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful, it's ugly, it's a beautiful yeah. head because, you know, you can't grieve unless you have love. So it's it's an expression mm. of love. Yeah. So it's beautiful but it's fucking hard. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. it's just really hard. So I know I think I said last week or whenever we spoke, Mm. that I'm going to take more time off next year, which I think mm. I will. Yeah. I think I'll take a few weeks before and after, like at least a week either side yeah, off. Allow yourself that space yeah. and maybe no travel, you know, Yeah, I think just be, more, or... be a bit more aware of that impact because it is, it's just, and then also some, a lot of people, um, well, not a lot of people, but some people wanted to ch- chat about it. And, I mean, that felt really good, mm. you know, that acknowledgement and that discussion felt really good. Mm. Being seen in that moment, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and I really, really appreciated that. Um, so yeah, had had a lot of beautiful conversations as well. But I think it's just the the work strangers, like they're not strangers because I work with them all the time, but they don't actually know my background or history. And when we're having these personal conversations, it's really yeah, it can be very, very hard to mm-hmm. hold that. And also, like you have a few drinks of alcohol, so that sort of lowers different force fields. So anyway, I'm going to actually rethink a lot of that stuff because it didn't feel good. It just made me feel really sad. Mm. Yeah. Alcohol over the weekend like came up for me too, actually, just like whether it's really a good thing. (laughs) Going back to that, like, yeah, yeah, maybe a little sober moment. Um, Yeah. I just think sometimes it just, well, you kind of, the, the barriers are broken down, but then often you say things that you wouldn't usually say. I said or, a lot of you know, weird stuff. Same. I, I was so weird, weird on the weekend. Stuff. Yeah. And it's not not in the work context, feel... but when I caught up with these other beautiful friends yeah. who came to the pod and it's so <laughs> sweet and so beautiful, I just said a few weird things and I'm like, what? Like the, I don't believe that. Like yeah. I don't even what know came what I'm out saying. of my mouth then? Yeah. What did, what did you say? Do you want to share any of your? Or was it just, it just felt I'm weird? catching up with some friends to talk about it because I I'm being brave and stepping into an yeah. uncomfortable moment for me. But yeah, just some things came out of my mouth and I was like, oh, like even at the time I was like, that's not because you know like, that you know it straight away, I'm, don't you? Yeah, you, yeah. I definitely my body totally gave me the response that I was just like, oh, this just is not what I intended to say. I think yeah. it was just yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you get those loose lips and things just come out yeah. when it's not. I just you don't have that. Um, you're not eloquent. You're not, you know, there's no grace. There's sometimes no grace in yeah. the, the, the way that you say things. Yeah. Or you seem a bit more verbose when yeah. usually, you know, you would say it, yeah, in just a different manner. 
different manner. Yeah. Yeah, because I did actually say to them, I said, sorry, like, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. Because I feel like I'm, I said, I feel like I'm finding my, I'm trying to, I'm having like an identity crisis. <laughs> And I do. I'm going through that yeah. too at the moment. It's an interesting. And when I talk about eclipse season, well, maybe this is the start maybe of it. Maybe we're in which we are all in this energy of pre-eclipse season. So it's quite I've I've read something last night. I was like, oh, it kind of made me feel a bit better that maybe it's coming, these words are coming out because we are in a state of transformation and change. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But I'll jump onto that a bit. I'll give a bit more insight into that after. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And alcohol. I feel like I sort of live. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I think that I'm going to just pull back a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like I'm, yeah, with work, I sort of feel like I live a bit of a double life in terms of when I'm traveling versus when I'm not. Yeah. I'm like a secret agent, but I'm not secret. It's not, no. I'm not an agent either, no, no. but it's <laughs> not a spy. Um, It'd be fun. But it is. It's very sort of double life, mm. but it's just a different part of my life. Really. Mm. But, yeah, I feel like I'm a bit in a crossroads of yeah. who am I? Who am I? You know that book? Those, like, deep questions. You know that? <laughs> exactly. Just, <laughs> <laughs> what was that book, um, that Chicken Little, oh, Who's my, he couldn't find his mummy? Okay. And it was, like, went yeah. up to all of, like, the aeroplane, are you my mummy? Oh, yeah. And ran up to the... Mm. No, I don't. Don't know that one. I've never actually watched that movie, so. Oh, no, it's not a movie. It's a book. Uh-huh. It's not but called. But Chicken Little no, it's is not a... called Chicken Little either. Okay. I don't know what it's called. Okay. But it was, a, it was about a bird who I think it fell out of its nest and it couldn't find its mum. I think it's called Are You My Mummy? Okay. Um, and it's looking, you know, it's looking for its identity and looking for yes. who it is and, you know, like, oh, you fly in the sky, you're a plane, you might be my mummy, mm-hmm. but, you know. But you, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's so I'm this, memory there. I'm this, therefore I'm that. And it's like, well, no, I'm not. And yeah, I think for me, it's also working out where that like grief fits into my life. Mm. Cause mm-hmm. it can be like the last few months, like the last month, it's sort of been, it's felt really all consuming, mm-hmm. but it's not my life. Mm. It's part of my life. Mm-hmm. So it's also just working out how we live together. Yeah, how you're married together but in a way that yeah. is. And I feel like we do do the dance pretty well sometimes, but I feel like it's just been a. You've come off a very, yeah. Yeah, a come highly, off a dance thon yeah, yeah, highly emotional yeah. time and I think that absolutely makes sense with um, the time of year that you've yeah. had. So. Well, someone said to me, you just need to have some fun, Steph. And I said, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, dancing. You need to bring that fun into your life. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Well, skipping right along. <laughs> I think that some of our audience mm. want to chat about Kate Middleton. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, mm. Kate Middleton. Mm. Where the F is Kate Middleton, a lot of people have been saying. Are you across any of well, this, Chloe? you sent me something and it did, <clears throat> excuse me, um, my interest was peaked. Is that the word? Yes. Um, piked or peaked? Mm. It was, yeah, I don't know, peak, piked. I don't know. <laughs> Your interest was, uh, it was... Engaged. Engaged. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, then I kind of like went into a bit of a rabbit warren. But yes. um, really, had you not kind of sent that image to me, I wouldn't have really heard about it. Yeah. So maybe you share what you sent to me. Yeah, okay. So let me just t- maybe I'll just take us back to the very beginning. Yes. Which, is always a which very was good last place weekend, to start. really. Yeah, but the beginning before that. Let's just go through a bit of a high level timeline of mm-hmm. what has happened mm-hmm. and where we're at. So December 25, so Christmas Day was Kate's last public appearance. Mm-hmm. Um she was seen with Prince William and her three children. Okay. Now just to note, her three children have not been seen since either. Mm. Interesting. Um, is this normal? Like, I mean, I'm not across the royal family. So for this, like, to be, for them to be out of the public eye for this amount of time, is that unusual? It is for Kate, but she is a, she's a senior royal. So when, you know, the whole Harry and Meghan of it all happened, yeah. Prince Charles at the time, now yeah. King Charles, said that he his vision was a slimmed down monarchy. So slimmed down monarchy meaning, like, the, there's really four senior royals being him and Queen Camilla and then William and Kate. Mm. And then there's a few other players like mm. Prince Edward and Princess Sophie and Princess Anne's always always had a big role in some of these mm-hmm. engagements. But, yeah, you would see them more often than that, absolutely. Okay. So like a three-month 
hiatus is unusual. It's a big, yeah, it's unusual. And they actually okay. announced just before Christmas that they were going to go, or it was just after Christmas either, or they were going to do, um, you know, a trip of Italy and all of that kind of stuff. So when mm. Kate's abdominal surgery was announced on the 16th of January, yes. everyone was sort of like, oh, my goodness, what is this? You know, what's happened? Okay. So she was admitted to hospital on the 16th with planned abdominal surgery in a mm-hmm. private hospital in London. Um Now, it was interesting because no one actually was seen visiting other than Prince William once. So her parents weren't seen visiting, the children weren't seen visiting. Mm. So it's like, did she have surgery? Yeah, or what what kind of surgery? What happened? But when they announced the surgery, Mm. they said it was a planned surgery, which means it could have been planned for the next day. So it was likely, you know, planned really far in advance because Mm. of this trip that they had planned. But they... Um, had the abdominal surgery and then that she wasn't going to be seen in public life yep. until after Easter. Okay, so, so that's quite what the story a, like, was. Yep, exactly. going out, yeah. Exactly. So Recovering. a few weeks later on January the 28th, the Spanish anchor claimed that Kate was in a coma. So this is really what kicked off all of the conspiracy a theories Spanish and speculations. Anchor. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. there's a lot of etiquette around the British press and what they can and cannot say. Oh. A lot of them have these reciprocal relationships, relationships yeah. with the royals. So they're very, tri- they're very you know, careful about what they do and do not say. Mm. So she was basically saying that after Kate was hospitalised, um, no, sorry, she said that Kate was hospitalised earlier. So she said it was, you know, in December, late December, and she th- said that, you know, something went wrong and that le- led to an induced coma. So that's what she said. The palace then told us that she was discharged on the 29th. We then found out that King Charles had cancer Mm -hmm. um, in early February. And then skip forward a month, all of this speculation is sort of Mm -hmm. still going on. Mm -hmm. It's quite underground at this stage. So I was aware of these conspiracies, but the normal person... No, I be. wasn't. You wouldn't have been no. across it, no. No. Then on the 4th of March, the first picture of Kate post-op emerged. Mm-hmm. So this was after two months out of the public eye. It was um, a picture that was taken with her mum in the car. So her mum was driving. She was in the passenger seat. She had these big sunglasses on yes. and it was taken by an international paparazzi agency, which okay. many are speculating was paid for by um, the, the Windsors. Yeah, by the Royals. Mm. And... This is when I thought, mm, she looks interesting, but, you know, that's to be expected, you Post know. Stop. And I was like, yeah. leave the poor woman alone. Okay. Leave her alone. Mm-hmm. You know, leave Kate alone. Then a few days later, March the 6th, her uncle, Gary Goldsmith, mm-hmm. was in Celebrity Big Brother in the UK. Yeah. And one of his fellow con- contestants, Ekin Sue, who was actually also on The Traders, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Ekin Sue. Ekin Sue's her name. Yeah. Ekin Sue. Yeah, Ekin Sue. E. Like- K I N dash S U. Ekin Sue oh, is her name. Yeah. Um, in the words of Phaedra, sweet baby Jesus, not Ekin Sue. I don't know if anyone else will get that. <laughs> I do not understand that. But anyway, he said, yes, tell us. But he said, when she asked her what's going on with Kate, he said, you know, there's an etiquette involved. I'm not going to comment. But if it's announced, I will let you know what I think. Mm. Which is, or if it's announced, I'll give you an opinion, which is quite interesting wording because if it's announced, if what's announced, you know, Mm. what are you announcing? Then we fast forward to March 10th, which is what? (sighs) At time of recording eight days ago. Yeah. I sort of feel like it's been a year in between because so much has happened. Yeah. So March 10th was Mother's Day in the UK. Yes. Okay. So we wish all of our listeners in the UK um, mm, a happy fantastic. Mother's Day, a gentle Mother's Day. Um, hope you are all keeping well and did something for yourselves mm-hmm. on that day. But on this day, a photo was released on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So it was released on Instagram, but it was also sent out to a number of media agencies mm-hmm. um, who report the news. And that's interest. That's important. That's important to understand. So. The, the photo was put on Instagram and straight away a lot of people said, what is this photo? There's so many discrepancies. So it was a picture of Kate and the three children, mm. so Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. Mm. And a kill notice was sent out by three photo agencies mm. to say there is digital manipulation, do not use the photo, which is massive. Like I don't think in the history of our lifetime such a kill notice yeah. has ever been sent out because they're saying this photo cannot be trusted. And in the so world, what does it mean? Like kill the photo? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It means kill the photo. Like get rid of the photo, retract it, or put make sure that it's very clear that this is a digitally manipulated photo. Yeah, right. 
You want to see the photo? So a lot of people, and we can, you know, we can um, share links to different stories, but essentially the photo, um, you know, there are a number of things that that looked a little bit strange, like Mm. the blurring, Kate's hair, the um, princess. Oh, yeah. Princess Charlotte, missing rings. Um, exactly, all of this kind of stuff, and even Kate's fingers. Like Kate's fingers, they did some shots of Kate fin- Kate's fingers in other photos. Yeah, and like normally, her middle finger is actually closer to her pointer finger. So they're like, was that? Is it looks this like normal. Like, do they? The, go this level of to, scrutiny yes. is totally normal. It's, to- it's like, totally. Like this normal. happens for every image. A lot of the images, yeah, wow. a lot of the images, and they were saying, you know, there were marks that looked like Kate's head had been put on. Um, oh. So, like, no, like, and really when you look at it, yeah. the digital manipulation is real and there's actually um, this great Instagram account which did a comparison of the photo of her head with a Vogue photo shoot that she did. I think it was back in 2016. Don't quote me. I don't have the, the stuff mm. in front of me. Mm. Um, and the likeness, like, I mean, Kate is Kate, but it was eerily similar in terms of pose, in terms of how her hair was, in terms of everything. So well, they were, I read something that it was back in December that it's kind of like they've taken the kids' clothes. Well, yeah, and that's another they, conspiracy. Okay, yeah. so the, so that's the, the one that you sent yeah, me. Yeah, so yeah. that when they were doing a food bank drive back in December, yes. if you look at what the children are wearing, it is very, very similar to this photo with some colours changed. Yes. So a lot of them are saying the Kate's head, so, so potentially the body is the body of the nanny and then Kate's head is taken from a Vogue photo shoot and then the children have got, uh, they're taken from, yeah, this this other engagement that they did back in December. So fully, fully. Orchestrated. Orchestrated and like Franken, Frankenstein's monster put together. So <laughs> like total, like, and to, to do a kill notice, it's not just because Kate was like, oh, I'm just going to make sure that everyone's face is looking happy. Like, it's, it's talking about real manipulation to change the story and all of the yes. agencies have put in some really stringent guidelines because mm. of the rise of artificial intelligence yeah. and AI imagery and that kind mm, of stuff. Okay. And it wasn't just the fact that Kate changed the colour of a jumper, like it's actually misrepresenting the situation. And had it just been put on her Instagram account, this may not have been an issue. But because they also sent it to these photo agencies who are reporting Who sent news, it? Who sent it? The Palace. Kensington Palace. So did it go through Kate's who? Kate's got a press team, yeah. So Kate and William have a press team. Um, Charles and Camilla have a separate press team. Okay. So, you know, the the politics of all of that are just actually ridiculous. We could spend a whole mm. pod talking about that. But, yeah, so, so the fact that they also distributed it is just like what the hell, like ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. It's actually when you just Google this, I've just Googled it, and when you go and look through it, there's so many discrepancies, discrepancies yeah. in the photo. Mm. Like mm. Charlotte's hair seems to be ends seem to be abruptly cut off her shoulder. And oh, it's like, wild! But it, like it you is, can see it. It is wild, Chloe. And you know what? You think so after months of speculation, you think that they would put out a subpar photo? Like Why? who are these idiots? So then the next day, Kate releases a story. Kate releases oh, yeah. a story saying, you know, I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photo we shared yesterday caused. Oh. I hope everyone has a happy Mother's Day and and basically said at the very start, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. So I have... Oh, so she's taken on... So she's th- taken the blame. So I have a number of issues with this. Kate is probably on her deathbed somewhere or trying to recover. The royal what? family are now blaming her. And when I say the royal family, it's it's King, it's not King, it's Prince William's team and her team. And they're always going to protect the heir. They're okay. always going to protect the heir. Yeah. They're always going to – but the fact that they're then blaming her, like who are these amateurs and why were they even experimenting, experimenting with Photoshop? And if they really <laughs> wanted to show that they were experimenting with Photoshop, they would have then released – the original photo. Yeah. But apparently the press agencies had a lot of trouble getting the metadata. So the metadata will tell you when the photo's taken. It of will course. tell you what changes have been made. Couldn't even get that from them. Mm. So it's just like cock up after cock up after cock up <laughs> by their press team. So anyway, <laughs> the next day. Are they, they all fired now? They should be fired. Yeah. But they probably won't be. The next day, so they she Kate releases Kate in inverted commas. Yeah. Releases this story. Yes. On their on their official page. Mm-hmm. And then later that afternoon, another blurry paparazzi photo of her emerges. Oh yes. Of her in a car with William. Oh, okay. 
on the way to, he's on the way to a royal engagement. She's going to a private appointment in London. Okay. Now, again, a lot of discrepancies about this photo have also come to light because Kate's silhouette, yes. you can't see her face, you can just see a side on view, but it's very, very similar mm. to a photo that was taken a few years earlier, <laughs> even down to the point of it looks like she's wearing a hat um, and she was wearing a hat in this, but you can yeah. see where it's been taken off, you can see a bow. Like it's just, mm. again, it is just absolutely what wild. world are we living in? I'm just Absolutely I'm a bit like, wild. this is just all bonkers. Are we yeah. all like, so are we everyone, human? What are we? Exactly. Are we? So everyone is like, where the fuck is Kate? What is going on? Like, we need <laughs> proof of life. Like, we need proof of life that she is actually available. Like, she's 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 alive. Because both of these photos have done nothing, or well, the three photos have done nothing to squash interest. Actually, they've intensified it and now we're having conversations like this. This used to be in a deep, dark hole of conspiracy in the internet. I was talking about it with my parents the other day. Mm. They're like, they don't care. They're not monikers. They don't really care about this shit, but they're like, what the hell is going on, Steph? And they know that I'm a good royal correspondent and they came to me. (laughs) But seriously, and so then this this morning. Mm. What's happened this morning? So... You know, and we are recording this on Monday the 18th of March. Just, yes. You know, because there might be other Would things it? that break. And if okay. we need to get back on the mics and do an emergency episode, you know, wow. we will. I'm excited by this. So anyway. But I hope she's morning, okay. Oh, no, I hope she's okay too. And at the end of the day, like I really do hope Kate is fine. That, that what really irks me is that the palace have completely fucked this up. Mm, completely and fucked blaming, this up. Yeah, and then, then blaming she Kate. Has to, yeah. But then there's all of these, like the conspiracy theories are out of control. So there was one saying that she had a Brazilian butt lift, which is why she was going, it wasn't abdominal <laughs> surgery. Another one's now saying she's had a facelift. Another one was talking oh, about man. um so Will had an alleged affair oh, with yeah, his lady Rose that. Hambury. Yeah, yeah. So then I was saying that she is pregnant with Will's baby and that blah 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 and Kate's refusing to, you know, uh, wants to divorce William. So there's so many things out there. And I don't really don't want to speculate oh, on that side of things gosh. because yeah. you know I feel sorry for Kate and I, I do hope she's okay. Mm. But then this morning um, when I woke up, I saw on my, um, you know, chat groups mm. that now people are scrutinising some earlier photos that were taken. Oh, gosh. Um, and so there was one of the Queen with some of her grandchildren, like most of her grandchildren, and all of these, again, it was allegedly taken by Kate. Mm. And there's so many inconsistencies throughout the photo. It looks like all the children have been, like, pretty much photoshopped in. And the uproar of this, like you think about it, you go, well, why is everyone so up in arms? Like you think about the Kardashians, like they would never release a photo where they're not digitally altered. Yes, that's right. But they're not purporting, like this is history Mm. in a way, like with the royals. It's like this is the the record of Mm. what has gone down. So that's why people are so, I suppose, upset about it and up in arms about it. So, Mm. I mean, this is an ongoing story. You know, we do hope Kate is okay. Um, but really the, they should fire everyone in the press offices at Kensington Palace. It's just a royal fuck-up. That's for <laughs> fucking sure. <laughs> wow. And I mean, I could talk about this a lot longer, but yeah. that's just the, that's the shorthand. Just the, like, synopsis. Yeah. Mm, wow. So interesting. Yeah. There was also like an ambulance scene leaving Windsor yeah. like just after Christmas. So a lot of people are saying, well, maybe she was, she's been in there for a longer time. But, yeah, it's just it's wild. And those deep holes of the, the <sighs> internet where this conspiracy lives are now, are now mainstream. Mm. Wow. It's very fascinating. Mm. You've made me fascinated by it. Mm. So, I, but I'm not going to spend my time for the rest of the day looking at this because I've got... Well, you've got what you need now. From, I do. Yeah. True. So you can give me an update. I can give you any more updates. I spent like yes, the thanks. whole flight to Singapore pretty much. <laughs> on this. On this topic. On this topic. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, yeah, that's, that's what's going on there. Okay. Now, I mean, like, because I'm on the... Wi- the wild web. Yep. I'm going to call it that. Now I'm into the weirdest things celebrities demand on their contracts. Taylor Swift. What does she? Oh, interesting. Anyway, anyway. anyway. Okay. Let's moving right along and let me give you a little update everyone on eclipse season and then we'll finish with our card pool for the end of the episode. And maybe eclipse season can give us some insight into how we've been feeling and also maybe Kate of it all. Maybe. 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 Potentially. So um, we are coming into the first eclipse season of the year for 2024. So eclipses offer us an opportunity for really deep transformation. 
and healing. And we're often like thrust into changes, even if we're not expecting them, you know, things can Mm. become out of left of field, like very unexpectedly. Um, So moments of endings or beginnings, and we can often look back, which I haven't done yet, but I'm keen to do this. We can often look back over our life thus far and kind of many of our pivotal moments of change or transformation will actually fall within eclipse seasons. Oh, fascinating to me. Very fascinating. So... Um, during this eclipse season, things will become really clear for us, like what is for us and what is not for us. It's like there's a voice of guidance, um, well, like like our intuition, I guess. It seems to just become cl- louder and clearer and felt on a really visceral level. Mm. Um, with this eclipse season, there's an element of surrender and trust. So as like I kind of alluded to, transformation is often out of our control. We might feel like there's a crunchiness around our being. We might feel that we're being led to like our edges and into discomfort. Trust this because it's all for our evolution. Mm. So be open to what is coming. So the dates for the first eclipse, so on the 25th of March, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. And then we have the, so it's like a month that we have. So we have a full moon and then we have the new moon. And then so on the 8th of April, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Okay. And then um, the final eclipse season happens later in the year in September. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a month and you can have that pre kind of eclipse kind of symptom. So Mm. I think it really makes sense why we were feeling time being a little bit all over the place or feeling quite emotional, very normal this time of year. Um, yeah. So here we go. Buckle up. Mm. Buckle up. Mm. And when's the full moon? Is that? The full moon is on the 25th of March or 26th, depending on where you are. Yeah. 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 So that will be, we'll talk about the next week. Yeah, next week. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. But just to give you a little bit of insight into, yeah, the kind of eclipse like overrides it all anyway. Mm, It does. Yeah. So it's kind of about everything. It's like the Trump's card, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep. Yep. Lovely. So yeah, be be ready for some change. Be ready. Yeah. Okay. It's exciting. I think. I think that we shouldn't fear it. We should just be like, oh yeah, open to yeah. Some things might change, and yeah. it's for the betterment of ourselves. Yeah. And I think it's just being aware that that's happening. Mm. And yeah, noticing. Yeah, you noticing. Know? And maybe being a bit kind to yourself as well yeah, during yeah. those transitions. Keeping those like practices like, you know, meditation, grounding, like in the earth, having a bath, um, yeah, going for a walk, all of those things are going to be supportive for you during mm-hmm. this time. So you're wanting me to pull today. Yes, okay. So what is our guidance for this week ahead? That one's standing out to me. And it is, oh, I think this is very (laughs) on point. Believing in spiritual guidance gives me certainty and the freedom to keep dreaming, even when I can't yet see the result. Perfect timing Mm. for the upcoming eclipse portal. So, yeah, just trusting that, um, yeah, you're being guided and that you can dream and even if you don't know what's going to happen, none of us know what's going to happen. No. All that we only know that change is inevitable yeah. always. So, exactly. yeah. Hmm. I love that. All right. Post that. Amazing. Well, thank you everyone for joining us yeah. on this episode today. This is part of our, you know, chat series where mm. we don't have a guest. Uh, in this case, like we didn't really have a topic. We just we just got riffed. on the mics. We just pressed record and here we are. <laughs> um, if you do want to follow us, you can find us at the dot selfish podcast on Instagram. We'll often put um, you know, stuff that we're doing through the week, or if we've talked about certain stories, we'll pop some photos or some reels up on there. So mm-hmm. make sure that you like us and Hello. if you Enjoy, yeah, if you enjoy what you're listening to, if you find it valuable, um, please do refer us to a friend. Mm-hmm. Word of mouth is the best way to get the word about our little grassroots podcast out there. Yay. And we also have a Patreon inner circle. So if you're like, wow, I love that content and I want to do something to give back to the pod, um, then that is the best way that you can do that. And those links are in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Have a great week, everyone. See you guys. Bye. Ciao.